Okay, ready. Welcome, welcome, I'm glad you're here with me. Did you know you're one with God for eternity? Welcome, welcome, I'm glad you're here with me. You're not a stranger anymore. you know you're one with God for eternity. Welcome, welcome, I'm glad you're here with me. You're not a stranger anymore, now you're family. You're not a stranger anymore, now you're family. stranger anymore now your family welcome good morning welcome you're not a stranger anymore now you're family, spiritual family, part of our spiritual fellowship and our community. To our first time visitors and guests today, we extend a very special warm welcome. Thank you for blessing us with your presence and your participation in our Celebration Sunday service. A reminder, we have a visitor sign-up sheet. If you bless us with your name and email address, we'd love to email you a gift, a spiritual booklet, kind of like a visitor swag bag, if you like. And also, we're an applauding congregation, and so at this time, we'd like to bless you with a warm, welcome round of applause. Before we begin our service, this is a good time to silence, turn off, or throw away your phones. <laughs> Before you do that, if you're a Facebook user, please check in on your app, tell everybody where you are, and how blessed you are, and what a wonderful time you're having. Please join me in an opening prayer. Divine Spirit, we come together today in spiritual fellowship and community, mindful and open-hearted of our oneness and allness in your presence and power. We anoint our service today for those here and those joining us online. We anoint it in true love, peace, joy for one and all. We open our hearts to greater insight today to live in the awe and wonder, the mystery and the magic of spirit, rediscovering the wow of our spiritual calling, our spiritual purpose, our spiritual power. This blessing we claim for one and all. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now it's time for our congregational song, so I invite you to stand and join in. Please go unity on us and sing and dance and clap your hands. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. 
this is the year that your ships come in. This is the year you find Christ within. This is the year you will be glad to live. This is the year you have much to give. This is the year when you know the truth. This is the year with you find new youth. This is the year that will bring happiness. This is the year you will live to bless. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Christy Bronner, and I'm the platform assistant for today. Let's take a moment to affirm and anoint the consciousness of our ministry and our community with our values, vision, and mission. So together, at Unity Spiritual Center of Vero Beach, we value love, faith, integrity, stewardship, and joy. Our vision is, centered in love, we create a world of harmony, abundance, and gratitude. And our mission is, teaching, loving, and inspiring people to be all they are created to be. And now for a few announcements. Mark your calendar. Our annual members meeting will be after the service on February 12th at 1115, right here in the sanctuary. You can look and watch for more information in the weekly emails and in our newsletter. Our fresh organic rejuvenate juice that Gina has been providing will now be available on the first Sunday of every month. So on February 5th, that'll be your next opportunity to sample and order if you're interested. On February 3rd through the 5th, Reverend Tony Semp will be pre presenting a three-day workshop, and he will be here next Sunday, January 29th, from 11.30 to 12, to give a little introduction. So if you'd like to find out more about that, please join us next Sunday after the service. Our Reiki circles, they have been happening in the chapel thank you <laughs> in the chapel and we intended initially for it to be once a month but they've been so popular they're now going to be every sunday so from 11 15 to 12 noon in the chapel penny will be there and they are available on a love donation basis another popular event mark your calendar strawberry sunday is coming up I do believe that there was a flyer available on the table as you entered or perhaps on the back table with more information. So that's going to be Sunday, January 22nd. No, no, February, sorry. <laughs> Tickets are available beginning today, which is Sunday, January 22nd. But our event is going to be on February 19th, right here after the service, a lunch with a beautiful salad and strawberry shortcake. So purchase your tickets, and we'll look forward to that on February 12th. OK, I think that's it for now. Thank you for the um, blessing that all of you are for being here. And now I'd like to invite up Charlotte Hadley, who is our prayer chaplain for today. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> As Christy said, I am your prayer chaplain for today. So anybody um, requesting private confidential prayer after service, I'll be here in the corner. And in our service this morning, our meditation service, we did bless 
our uh, prayer box and all the names of the people that, that are in it. And it is now out in the foyer, so anybody um, after service, you want to put a prayer request in, please do so. And now for the daily word. I love this word. Power. My thoughts and words reflect my divine inheritance. When I listen to my inner conversation and recurring thoughts, I may hear fear-based, limiting talk, or I may hear positive words encourage me to live joyfully and confidently. The choice is mine. Through my divine gift of power, I take command of my thoughts and my life. I relieve thoughts of powerlessness, and as I do, my negative self-taught diminishes. I affirm my divine inheritance of faith, wisdom, understanding, and strength with my thoughts, words, and actions. The power to live a full life is mine. I embrace insights I have gained through experience. I own my mistakes without shame or embarrassment. I am eager to learn. I am willing to try new things and stretch myself. In power, I thrive. And from scriptures, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And the affirmation is, my thoughts and words reflect my divine inheritance, so let's please repeat that together. My thoughts and words reflect my divine inheritance, and thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are in our fourth week of the month, which means this is a sing-along before meditation song. Uh, this week we're doing uh, Face of God. So uh, it, this is a call and response. So I'll be singing the response. Peter will be singing the call. So you can sing with either person you want, either Peter or me. doesn't matter. Uh, but this is to prepare us for meditation. Or the man can sing with Peter and the woman can sing with Laura. Sure. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. You are the light of God. You are the light of God. I hold you in my heart. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are a part of me. You are the light of God. You are the light of God. You are the face of love. You are the face of love. I hold you in my heart. I hold you in my heart. You are my family. You are my family. You are the face of God. 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 I hold you in my heart. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. You are a part of me. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. You are a part of me. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Let's join together now in a time of meditation. Inviting the body to relax. The mind to become quiet.
and with an inhale and exhale, dropping into our heart space. Inviting the heart to open and expand. Into the oneness and allness of this holy moment. Today we celebrate... The call of spirit to live daily with awe and wonder. And recognizing ourselves and each other as the face of God is where that awe and wonder begins. With great gratitude, we recognize that each soul is created in the image and likeness of God. And blessed with divine presence and power, potential and possibility. And Spirit invites us to recognize that about ourselves and also to extend that recognition to everybody else. To those we love dearly, to our friends and neighbors, and to even those that bless us with the inspiration to be better human beings. And so I invite you now to sit with me in a time of silence and to open your heart to a deeper realization of that universal truth that you and everyone else is a unique demonstration of the face, image, and likeness of the divine that we call God. Return your awareness to your heart space. And as is our practice every Sunday, invite a feeling of gratitude. Gratitude for the gift and the treasure of divine presence and power in you and everyone. 
Wherever we are, God is, and the potential and possibility for grace and good abounds infinitely. And let's conclude with a thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. I apologize ahead of time for having to take you out of that very peaceful time. Um, but this is an upbeat song, so you know me. Um, it's repetitive, so if you want to sing along, clap. Again, unitize it. What, what do you call it, uh, Reverend Clive? Be unity and go unity, go unity on us. There you go. All right, here we go.
think I heard a whoa. <laughs> That's always good. Thank you, Laura and Peter, for blessing us with their musical talents today. Let's give them another round of applause. <clears throat> Think it, dream it, believe it, and do it, man. So one of the pure beauties of our spiritual philosophy at Unity is we encourage people not only to think that which is right, true and good, righteousness, and to feel it and to speak it, but to do it. To go out into the world, into your life, and not only be an advocate for what you feel is true, right, and good, but be an activist for that true, right, and good in your little place, in your little corner, in the world, as who you are. A unique, indiv individualized expression of the image and likeness, the face of God. Yes? That's our lesson for today. Let's. <laughs> it's playoff Sunday, right? Yes. I was going to wear black today in mourning because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers got knocked out this week. Very sad, yes. Somebody asked me this week if Christy and I were picking a backup team for the Super Bowl. Uh, and if we'd, if we'd done so, yet, We are going to pick a backup team for the Super Bowl. We haven't done it yet. I think we're waiting till the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> that seems like a good time. I'm so excited about today's lesson. I do it every year with a new perspective and twist. It's the lesson that follows the Martin Luther King celebration of I Have a Dream. The title for today's lesson is Rediscovering Wow in 2023. And wow is not an acronym for anything. Except for me, wow is living in the daily awareness of divine awe and wonder. Yes? Living in awe and wonder. Looking at the ordinary mundane things of our lives through divine inspired eyes and seeing that in truth there is nothing that is ordinary and mundane. That everything in our world and in our human experience is pregnant with divine potential and possibility. Like a seed in the soil of our hearts and our minds, pregnant with divine potential and possibility. The affirmation for today's lesson, Touched by Grace, living in gratitude, I'm open-hearted to the divine awe and wonder, the wow of life and living. January in our unity calendar is such a wonderful time for us. So is February, March, April, May, June, you get it. But January is that month where we celebrate the two powers of the 12 powers, faith and imagination. Faith is our power to perceive beyond the material and the ordinary, and imagination is, to, is our power to take that perception in visions and dreams and ideas and images, giving us a calling for 2023. And in the power of those two powers, we have celebrated our burning bowl service on New Year's Eve and released those things that no longer serve our highest good. And celebrated the newness of the new year on our white stone service celebration with our white stone word and our letter of intention 
for 2023. And last week we opened our hearts to that dream, that desire of the divine to call us into greater spiritual integrity and authenticity. And today the invitation is to be open-hearted, open-minded, have our eyes looking with divine truth to see awe and wonder in our everyday life experience. I found this reading in the Daily Word archive that I think just perfectly shares that thought in deeper detail. It's the Daily Word for Sunday, May 24th, 1959. A very special year. If you have a Cabernet or a Chardonnay from 1959, it's probably a good wine. Each day I am awakened anew to knowing the presence and power of God in the world and in my life. I see with awe and wonder the display of the divine everywhere. In the magnificence of the heavens, the beauty of a flower, the laugh of a child, the kind word of a friend, daily I rediscover, wow. I've adapted the daily word slightly. (laughs) In gratitude I go about my day, open-hearted to the mystery and magic of spirit, able to look beyond appearances and to see the world in a grain of sand, and a heaven in a wild flower, to hold infinity in the palm of my hand and eternity in an hour. In awe and wonder I see the presence and power of God everywhere and live in the loving embrace of its oneness and allness. I feel peaceful and assured that God's infinite grace and good are sufficient for my every need. As I live daily in the attitude and intention of gratitude, I am filled with grace and generosity. I am able to rediscover wow and participate in the awe and wonder of my life and living. May that reading bless our hearts with the insight of those words. Albert Einstein said, There are two ways to live your life. You can live as if nothing is a miracle or you can live as if everything is a miracle. The most beautiful thing we can experience, he said, is the mysterious. It is the source of all true religion, art and science. And one of the blessings for me in our unity, faith, and philosophy is that we consider our spiritual faith and philosophy as a spiritual science. Yes? It is something that we practically live every single day of, every single day of our lives. Charles, Fulmer, Ful, Charles Fillmore one of our co-founders used to say, if it doesn't work, let it go. Right? Do not believe something just for the sake of believing it. Apply it to your thinking, your feelings, your words and your actions, and let it demonstrate its good in your life. If it does not do that, release it and move on to a deeper, greater realization of what is true, right and good. I've had the blessing of turning 63. (laughs) Who said 63? 63 this year. I'm loving my age. I really am. It's that For me, it's that sweet spot between having learnt a little bit about the world and myself 
and still having enough energy and vitality to enjoy life and living. It's just beautiful. And I see such divine grace in the process of aging. As I age and open my heart to this human, very, very human, a thing we all share in common, process, I see the divinity of it. I see the grace in it. I see the beauty in it. It comes with challenges, but so do many of our spiritual blessings. Yes? I live in the attitude of not aging, and I've shared this with you in the past, but staging through life. Each life, for me, each part of my life has a stage to it. And what is appropriate and exciting and wonderful for me at this age and stage is not something that might have been appropriate, exciting or wonderful at the age of 30 or 35. Or will be, if God grants it, at the age of 70 or 75 or 80. And so in January every year, I try and take time to rediscover the awe and wonder of my human existence. To revisit the idea that no matter what age I am or what stage I'm in, my life has divine meaning and purpose. And to try and rediscover what that is for this time of my life. And yes, as we get older, we do have some more human challenges. But that means to me that we are being invited to experience greater divine grace in those human challenging experiences. And if we open our hearts to that idea, even though some of those challenges are very real to us, we will find meaning and purpose in them that once again open our eyes to awe and wonder of the planet we live on, the human life experience we've come here to have. Every stage and age in life is a part of the school of life, a unique opportunity again and anew to rediscover that divine meaning and purpose. It's, we are never too old, and it's never too late. We are never too old, and it's never too late. This new year, this new week, this new day is always a good time to begin again. Refreshed, renewed in the presence and power of God. Charles Fulmer was 93 when he wrote these words. I fairly sizzle with zeal, energy, and enthusiasm, eager to do that which ought to be done by me today. Let me read that again. 93, Charles Fulmer. I fairly sizzle with zeal, energy, and enthusiasm, eager to do which, that which ought to be done by me today. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Thank you, Charles Fulmer. Of course, there is a back story to that. Wonderful Myrtle Fulmer had passed, Charles had mourned for a while and been blessed with a new love romantic relationship. So in that context, I fairly sizzle with zeal. <laughs> Which identifies the fact that in our human relationships we are here to help each other. More fully experience the awe and wonder. I'd like to turn our conversation today to something that blesses me and my hope is that it will bless you as well. The mystery of divine awe and wonder I find is fulfilled in this idea of the Christ. 
What is this idea of the Christ? The Apostle Paul says, I have come to serve the commission that God gave to me to present to you. The word of God in all its fullness. That the mystery is now disclosed to one and all. The glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul describes it as the glorious riches of this divine mystery. The glorious riches of this divine mystery. God in us. Not God apart from us. Not God separate from us. But the presence and power, image and likeness, potential and possibility of the divine in each one of us. Giving our life meaning and purpose and the power to fulfill that meaning and purpose. Our hope of glory. I serve that same commission and invite you to do the same. The true divine awe and wonder of life and living and the true divine meaning and purpose of each day is to every day anew explore the divine mystery of the Christ in us and in our lives our hope of glory. It is in that Christ ideal that we are uplifted to be all we are created to be, which is our mission, to create a sacred space for this community and in the world where we invite and teach people to be all God designed, developed, and declared them to be. And so for me to live every day with awe and wonder is to take the time to live from Christ consciousness. And we live from Christ consciousness when we take the time to think from Christ consciousness, to feel from Christ consciousness, to speak and to act from Christ consciousness. Laura's song today was such a blessing to me because it reminded me that that is really all I have to teach you. And so for the rest of 2023, in some form or another, that's all you're going to hear. Whatever good it is you desire in your life, whatever grace it is you desire, whatever truth, whatever truth, whatever righteousness you desire, Think it, feel it, speak it, and do it. That is the law that sprouts and grows and brings that seed of divine good into cultivation, flowering, fruiting, and harvest. I'll never forget this. I used to mentor <coughs> with a minister called Reverend Temple Hayes. Reverend Temple was the senior minister for First St. Petersburg, Unity, Florida. First Unity, St. Petersburg, Florida. And in my very first meeting, I said to her, what was the most frightening experience that you had in your ministry? I was very challenged with public speaking, as you can see. I've come a long way by the grace of God. You should have seen me 14 years ago. But I said to a temple, Reverend Temple, what was the most challenging experience you had in your ministry? And she said, you know, I had just signed a contract to be a minister for a church for five years. And I had just done my first Sunday service and walking off the stage from the podium, I realized I just told them everything I know. <laughs> and I still had four years 
and 51 weeks to my contract. We live with awe and wonder when we apply this simple practice of taking time every single day to connect with the presence and power of God, the Christ within, and then to think it, feel it, speak it, and do it. And so in closing, I'd like to give you four things that I invite you to do every single day that will bring and reawaken yourself, bring this awe and wonder more realistically into your everyday life experience. Begin your day with prayer. Find time each day to pray. Not the prayer of petition where you're begging with the God apart from yourself, but the prayer of affirmation where you are centering yourself in the awareness of oneness with God's presence and power and setting your intention for the day. When you pray from God's presence and power and you set your intention for the day, you are sending the Spirit of God out into your day before you to prepare the way for the blessing of your highest grace and good. Find time for prayer every morning. Let that be the way you start your day. Albert Einstein says, One cannot help but being awe when we contemplate the mysteries of eternity, of life, of the universe. It is enough if one tries merely to comprehend a little of this mystery every day. Never lose a holy curiosity. Never lose a holy curiosity. Prayerfully in the morning, setting your intention, step into your life with curiosity. Almost like, what good is going to happen today? What challenge is going to come my way that helps me better develop my image and likeness, my presence and power of the divine within? As you go through your day, find time to live mindfully in the moment. Yes? Mindfully in the moment. Don't let your day be a blur that runs from one end to the other. Let your day come at you slowly. Be mindful in the moment. Try and live from a heart-centered space. I have found that the more I practice being mindfully at the moment, the more of a gap I have between stimulus and response. Do you understand? When we do not have a gap to be mindful between stimulus and response, we are in ego and are living in flight, fright, fight, freeze, excuse my French, and the other word, we are reacting to life immediately. We're being poked with a stick and we're rawr, reacting back. When we live mindfully in the moment, in the awareness and oneness of divine presence and power, there's a huge gap. There's a pause. There's a peace. There's a poise to our life experience. Something happens and we go, hmm, what are my options? What are my guiding values? What are my guiding ideals? What are my guiding principles? How does this serve my divine spiritual experience? How best can I respond to this in the consciousness of the Christ? And I bet you will find that nine times out of ten, you will not respond in the moment. You will come away and take your time before returning with divine insight and inspiration. The third thing I'd like to share with you about living with more divine awe and wonder each day is to end your day, to take time at the end of the day for meditation and reflection. Meditation is just a moment to sit in the centering, the centering of your awareness in your heart space. 
relaxing the body, relaxing the mind, being calm and quiet. Allowing a review of the day that has just passed and reflecting on its experiences. What was helpful to your white stone word? What was helpful to your letter of intention? How can you live, learn and grow from the experience that came to you that day? And then if you are a journaler, if you have a journal, write some thoughts down. Write some insight and inspiration down. Because guess what? The school of life begins again tomorrow. And when you resurrect to the newness of that new day, there will be another day of divine living and learning and growing in the awe and wonder of life for you to live. And then finally, after you've set your intention with prayer in the morning, you've lived mindfully in each moment during the day, you have taken time for meditation and reflection and journaling in the evening, Awake the next morning to begin again. Begin each new day not as a wise sage, but as a curious beginner. As a learner, not an expert. Opening your mind and heart to whatever the divine has pre prepared for you to live and learn for that day. In the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, finish, finish each day and be done with it. Finish each day and be done with it. You have done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities no doubt crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. Or forget them as soon as you've reflected on how to do better next time. Tomorrow is a new day. You shall begin it serenely and with too high a spirit to be encumbered with your old nonsense. You'll begin it serenely and with too high a spirit to be encumbered with your old nonsense. Encumbered with your old nonsense. <laughs> if we are guided by those four principles for daily living, I believe that our eyes and hearts will be opened to rediscovering the divine awe and wonder, the divine wow of ourselves and the everyday experience of life and living. I'd like to close with a poem from Eleanor Holbrook Zimmerman. Sometimes I stand amazed before the thought that I am more than I outwardly seem. I'm a secret kingdom wrought by God in stranger fashion than I dream. And all my shores are heavenly, my hills thrust upward to a sky unknown. My heart the bird whose song with rapture spills across fair meadows that God's hand has sown. Sometimes I stand amazed that God should be partaker of my common daily bread, walking the windly hills of life with me, marking with me the starshine overhead. Drinking with me the water and the wine, sharing with me my simple, plain abode, tracing with me divine, infinite design, and walking before me on every stony road. Sometimes I stand amazed before the thought of how in me God's kingdom has been wrought. Let's open our heart to this today. In this month of January, this fourth week, in the powers of faith and imagination, let us each invite 
that rediscovering of divine awe and wonder in us and in our lives as a blessing for each day, a new way to live and be in the world. Yes? Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Clive, for that wonderful lesson. We come to the time of receiving our tithes and our love offerings, and I invite you today to dedicate your gift to living in that awe and wonder that Reverend Clive has invited us to do. And as you take your gift in your hand, together we will say the love offering blessing. Together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And as our ushers, Bonnie and Kay, come forward to collect your tithes and your love offerings, Laura has another musical gift to share. You'll be sharing too. <clears throat> this is a call and response. Both of these songs today are by Karen Drucker. Um, so this is kind of a follow-up to the last song. This one's called the Prosperity Chant. So again, call and respond. I call and you respond with the same exact word that I just said, or words. What do I desire? What will bring me to my highest good? What do I want? What do I desire? What will bring me to my highest good? Prosperity. Prosperity. I claim it. I claim it. Abundance. Abundance. Is mine. Is mine. Love. Love. Flows through me. Flows through me. I feel joy. I feel all the, time. All the time I can have it I can have it I deserve it I deserve it I claim it I claim it it is mine it is mine I can have it I can have it I deserve it I deserve it I am it I am it it is mine it is mine peace peace fills my heart fills my heart I surrender I surrender everything everything health is my birthright is my birthright passion passion helps me sing helps me sing i can have it i can have it i deserve it i deserve it i claim it i claim it it is mine it is mine i can have it i can have it i deserve it i deserve it i am it i am it it's my time it's my time Good job. All right. A little bit louder at this end. Now you know how this is kind of supposed to go, okay? <laughs> anything I want, anything I desire, anything that brings me to my highest good. Anything I want, anything I desire, anything that brings me to my highest good. I release, I release and let go. I accept what is mine? What is mine? I can have it. I can have what I want. What I want. And let spirit, and let spirit direct, the flow. direct the flow. Life is good. Life is good. Life is fun. Life is fun. Life is great. Life is great. This song is done. Thank you, Laura, for the fun of that song. Let's uh, bless our love offering together. Divine Spirit, Father, Mother God, with gratitude and thanksgiving, we open our hearts and our hands to receive the generous gifts and donations today. We anoint these givings in your divine purpose and power and through our values and our vision and our mission 
Send them out into the world to be a blessing for one and all. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Amen. A few, uh, a few ministers' reminders before we join in the singing of our peace song and our prayer for protection. Uh, correction. It started out as a few ministers' reminders. A couple have been added to the list. Wednesday, the 25th, this coming Wednesday, we are having a new member orientation class. We are so blessed. I believe at the last count we have as many as 14 more people that will be attending that class and considering joining us as new members. So thank you, God, and thank you, our congregation, for that. 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary on Wednesday. If you're interested in knowing more about unity as a spiritual fellowship and community, please come and attend. We'll have a handout for you. It's not a commitment to join as a member. We have an annual members meeting coming up on Sunday the 12th of February. Sunday the 12th of February, annual members meeting. Please, if you are a member, put that on your calendar. We have church business to discuss. We are going to be voting in new trustees for our board and in the Sunday service we'll also be honoring our new members and our new prayer chaplains. It'll be a day of community, fellowship and celebration. It's also Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> but that's later in the afternoon, right? <laughs> So priorities, first things first, church, annual members meeting, and then Super Bowl. Uh, I'm going to tease next Sunday's lesson. It's one of my favorites. Be to have, not have to be. It's a lesson based on the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. It's about be the change, be the good, you want to see in the world. Be it first, and you will have all that your heart desires. For our visitors today, we thank you again for blessing us with your presence. We invite you to join us at our hospitality counter to your right uh, of the sanctuary. We'll have some refreshments there for you, and that gives us a chance to say hello and to welcome you in person. And then lastly, Bob's reminded me to remind our parents to please remember to sign your kids out of Sunday school. If you go home and leave them here, <laughs> we're probably going to give them a shot of espresso and a free puppy. <laughs> so please take them home with you. And now... Thank you for your presence. This was a blessed Sunday for me. I hope it was one for you. Let's stand together, sing our peace song, and say our prayer for protection. Whoops. Let there be peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be, with God as creator, family all are we, let us walk with each other in perfect harmony, let joyous love to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me and now a prayer for protection together 
The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And so it is. Thank you, God. Amen.